How many of y'all recognize this mask? Well, probably most of y'all because it's one of the most popular TV shows on Netflix right now, and that is Squid Games. But that's not why we're here to talk today. Why I did bring this up is because that is how a lot of us feel about 2021. And as we get closer to the end of the year, I want to discuss what 2022 looks like. My name's Josh Parker, your Austin Realtor. And yes, it was a very frustrating year if you were a buyer, because let's face it, homes were selling at record high numbers, and most of the time you were having 20, 30 offers on a home, which made it extremely difficult if you were the buyer that was trying to buy that home. Now, if you were the seller, congrats, because you took advantage of a great time to make some money on your home. Hopefully you had a backup plan on where to live, but for most folks, it was very, very frustrating. I had multiple clients just say, look, man, we want to take a break. We want to see if this will cool down because it's just getting ridiculous on how many offers we're having to make. And if you didn't have a large sum of money to go above and beyond the asking price, it was very difficult to find homes for buyers. Now, it's possible if we went outside the box, looked a little further outside of town, but if you were in town, it was just brutal. I mean, there's no other word to describe it. It was just brutal. Now, looking ahead, looking at 2022, what does that look like? You know, I keep hearing everybody say, oh, the market's going to crash, the market's going to crash, it's going to crash, it's going to crash. And I don't really think that that's the case. Now, we did just see the announcement from Zillow saying that they are quitting their iBuying model. They're letting go about 25% of their staff, which is a huge number. But I also can't say that I'm so surprised to hear that they've quit doing they're wholesaling and they're purchasing because I saw it many times in our area in Austin where they were overpaying for homes and it's just not a solid business model when you are buying high and then hoping to continue to see that increase and hoping that you can make money on the back end because while you're purchasing up a lot of real estate your expenses keep adding up and when you have to sit on it for 90 days and then try to turn around and sell it and you've put five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 into it. You've paid employees to go through it with a fine tooth comb and market it and get everything done. It's almost impossible to make money. It's always been buy low, sell high. I mean, it's just like anything. And if you're buying high and trying to sell high, it's a dangerous game that you're playing, and they quickly found out that it's not sustainable. Now, there are some iBuyer companies out there that do it well, and they offer a fair number, sometimes a little bit below market, but if you're in a hurry or have to get rid of a home, it's a great option for you. Not all of them are bad, but it's a slippery slope if you don't have all your ducks in a row. And so... As we get down to the end of 2021, we're seeing some things that are indicators that show that the market is somewhat leveling out. And I've said it before, we're not going to see a crash. We're going to see it level out some, and it makes it to where the playing field becomes a little more favorable to the buyer. But as far as waiting on that crash to happen, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't suggest it because, let's face it, Interest rates have been the lowest they've ever been, and we're starting to see some rises in it. And I did a video on interest rates and what 1% can do to the, your buying ability as well as your monthly payment. And I'll link that up top so that you can reference back to it if you want to watch that video. However, as we get into 2022, I think we are going to still see a high demand for home ownership especially for first-time buyers. Let's face it, the world has changed as we used to know it because of COVID. Whether we like it or not, 
it's not going away anytime soon. We're going to reel in the effects from it, and we're going to have to adapt and get creative with how we conduct business, how we live our everyday lives. And look, I'm not a fan of it. I don't enjoy watching everything happen around, but it's inevitable. I can't change it. I can't do anything about it. And so as we go into next year, those first-time buyers that are now able to work from home, like many of us are these days, they want a bigger space. They want a home to call their own and to live that American dream of home ownership. And that goes for all of y'all that have bought several homes or invested in homes. The demand is still there. It's not going anywhere. However, interest rates will rise and they we saw it last week with a slight rise they'll dip back down but we're going to start seeing that interest rate increase as things become open again and continue to try to get back to some normalcy and so when you wait to see if the market crashes it could cost you thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars so don't wait on a crash. If you want it to cool down, well, here's your opportunity where it has taken a slowdown, a cool down period, and we're seeing homes start to sit a little bit longer on the market. Now the confusing and frustrating thing for sellers now is that they saw the big money happen in 2021. They saw homes just go for astronomical numbers and they want in on that bandwagon. They want to jump in and they want to sell their home because there's more homes available out there to, to buy. However, it's a double-edged sword because you now have a cool down and people still expect that top dollar, those multiple offers. And it can be a very challenging thing to explain to a seller that, hey, market is not what it was four months ago. It has completely changed, and now you need to price your house more according to today, not four months ago, today. And so that's the biggest challenge that I see is explaining that to home sellers and getting them to understand that, hey, it's not going to pull in 20, 30 offers. It may sit for two or three weeks unless you price it very competitively, price it towards the lower to mid range of what that neighborhood brings in so that you draw a big crowd. Because let's face it, people want that right number. They want to come in. They think it's a great deal and they're going to be more aggressive, which in turn can create the multiple offers. So 2022, I think what we're going to see is that we're still going to have a very high demand for housing. With all the shipping containers sitting offshore right now, waiting to be delivered, we have a lot of new construction going up in and around the Austin area, and they're waiting on supply. And so the demand for purchasing homes is still very much there, but they can't get the material to to finish these builds and so we're still going to see a lot of influx of people moving to Austin if Samsung opens up which I'm hoping that they announce that at some point because that could end up in Taylor Texas which means that you're gonna have thousands of people moving that direction you have a whole lot of other corporations that are moving to Austin and so we're still going to see this big influx we're still going to see a high demand for housing and with businesses changing their model on working from home, people that have never owned a home that have rented for years are going to want to make that jump, make that purchase of home ownership. And with interest rates low, before they jump up, they're going to take advantage of that. So overall, I think we're going to see quite a bit of leveling out. Still think we're going to see demand. I think it's a great opportunity for buyers to get out there. If they took a break, if you hit the pause button, 
don't wait until interest rates start rising. I will tell you, I look at homes daily, get out there with clients daily, and it's a great opportunity. Right now, you're able to go in, make an offer, and it doesn't have to be above. Sometimes it can be slightly below because things are sitting longer, like I said. So, at the end of the day, if you have any questions, hit me up. Leave a comment below, hit that subscribe button, whatever you have to do to follow along, and we'll see y'all soon.